Worship him because he's good. Worship him. Jesus, we worship you. to yourself or look to others. Look to him.
refreshing in this place. Refreshing as you wait on him. Let him be your source. Let him be your sustenance. Let him be the very air you breathe and your strength. Let him be your all.
reveal your words to us, Lord. I pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to be poured into us, Lord. Open the words to us. Your word is life. to the hills for whence comes my help my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth he will not allow your foot to be moved he who keeps you will not slumber behold he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep the Lord is your keeper the Lord is at your right hand the sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night the Lord shall preserve you from all evil and he shall preserve your soul the Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth even forevermore Our help comes from you, Lord. We lift our eyes to the hills. We lift our eyes to you. We lift our focus and all of our being towards you. You your are our name help. Is like honey on my lips. Your spirit. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Jesus, I love you. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Your name is like honey on my lips. Your spirit like the 
the Savior that we see. Fresh, the weary soul. He says, Come. Nobody else has my heart the way that you do. Come to me. Just one word from you sets me on fire, Jesus. Oh, when I Jesus. Can't tell, in love with the Lord is your shepherd. He gathers you to himself.
longs to gather you Even right now, I feel you're here. to himself. Just come. Let him feed you. Let him wash over you with his presence. Just worship him. Just come to him. He's worthy. He is standing at the door. He's knocking on your heart. someone today he stands at the door and he knocks he calls you by your name if any man opens the door to me I will eat with him he with me open your heart to receive him every day receive him. this reason we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you and ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord fully pleasing to him being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy Colossians 1 giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us 
to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us to the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. Open your hearts to receive Him. Every day He knocks. He stands and knocks. And His will is that you would grow in the knowledge of His will and in the knowledge of the Lord. Jesus wants to hold you as a shepherd holds a sheep. Let him hold you. today, Jesus. Jesus. You have been translated, delivered from darkness to light. Worship Him. Give Him glory. Give Him your attention. Worship Him.
Allow the Spirit to do a deep work within you. Allow the Spirit to do the deep work in you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Allow him to do the work in you. There's someone watching this stream right now, and this is what I saw in my spirit. I saw someone pointing a finger and being bitten by venom. The venom of deception and the venom of finger pointing, the venom of bitterness. uproot that now in Jesus name I uproot that bitterness issue in Jesus name be muzzled be silenced in Jesus name be free from that in Jesus mighty name
understand and figure things out. Just worship Him. He does the work. Shake off deception. Every hindrance and weight, shake it off. Move forward. and I saw something else I saw stinging like a scorpion stinging you feel like you can't have victory over a specific area in your life and it just keeps stinging back well, the reason why it keeps stinging back is because you're trying to crush it on your own you need to run to Jesus. And as you run in Him and you make your home within Him, He crushes the thing for you. eyes on the Lord. Keep your eyes on Christ. Bitterness, strife comes when you get your eyes off the altar. Bitterness comes when you look to man and not to the Lord. Hide in Christ. Every self-destructive thought crumbles under the feet of Jesus.
If you do not allow the Lord to fight for you, you do not trust him. Do you do not live a life of yielding and surrender to him? You do not trust him. And if you want to grow in trust, you need to develop communion with him. Because trust only grows from experience. The Lord wants to hold you. Like a shepherd to a sheep, he wants to hold you. I just kept seeing that over and over again. Two specific things. The Lord is knocking on some of your hearts. The Lord is knocking on some of your hearts. You've not fully let him in. Now, this word isn't for everyone, but there are some here. The Lord is knocking on your heart. Do not be stubborn. There's a stubbornness that has come on you. You have a door creaked open. He wants it wide open. The difference between a sheep and a goat is a sheep listens to the shepherd because the sheep and the shepherd share the same name. Sheep, shepherd, sheep. There's a likeness. The goat eats whatever it wants to eat. It's stubborn. Jesus separates the sheep from the goats. I see knocking on the door of some of your hearts. He's knocking. He doesn't want a halfway door open. He wants the full door to open. And this comes from a sense of the feeling of control. There's a part of you that's afraid because I don't know who I'm talking to, but I just got to flow with this. There's a part of you that doesn't open the door fully because you don't fully trust. You're afraid of losing control. There's someone else watching this stream that you struggle immensely and the area of pleasing others and becoming like a chameleon in front of people where you change in front of people because of acceptance. The Lord wants to kill that. The reason why there's a struggle in that, the root of that is because you've not been secured in Christ. You're healing. You don't need a deliverance. You need a healing, and that healing will only come from the security of the presence of Christ. Until you understand that your security and your acceptance comes from Him and Him alone, you will always go through the same thing.
It's it's very See, we live in a culture. We live in a culture where it's like one, two, three anointing. We live in a microwave generation where everything is instant. Everything is micro, uh, you know, and then everyone wants an instant healing and an instant deliverance. And I believe in instant healings and I believe in instant deliverances. I, I was set free miraculously. I was delivered instantaneously. But I'm telling you, there's some of you right now that your healing and your deliverance is not going to be an instant thing because he wants to be your all. He is the deliverer. He is the healer. He is the healing. It's him. We live in a generation where it's like one, two, three, I'm done. I want instantaneous. And it's not that way. There are some healings that take place in the waiting. There are some things that you are called to wait in because the waiting is your healing, the waiting before the Lord. Some of you, some of you have been crying out, I want to get set free from this and I want to be healed from this. And deep down inside, the Spirit of God is already showing you that you have to walk through this. Jesus, you know, the Lord said in Isaiah, he says, when you walk through the fire, I will be with you. When you walk through the many waters, I will be with you. When Peter walked on the water, Jesus was with him. He doesn't take away your storm. He gives you the strength to see him in the storm the Lord is your solution see the problem is this we're looking to anything else he is the answer G did Jesus heal instantly? Yes. Did he deliver instantly? Yes. But what was the prerequisite? That they would come to the Lord. So come to him. There's a daily coming to the Lord. And I'm going to tell you this. Some of you might not agree with me, but that's fine. Not everything is instant. If that was the case, then why would three quarters of the New Testament talk about the concept called sanctification? Sanctification is the process of walking out your salvation with fear and trembling for the purpose of conformity to Christ. Again, I do believe in instant things, but there is a walking out that is required of us. Not everything will be instant. Some things will. If everything was, you'd be in heaven already. If everything was 100% instant, 100% of the time, then why have the scriptures 
then why have Romans through Jude, all of the epistles that teach us how to walk with the Lord? If everything was instant, then why does Paul pray this in Colossians 1.9? He says, I, since the day I've heard of it, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and ask that you may be filled with all knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord. See, a walk is a walk because it's a present thing. It's ongoing. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. See, there are some things that you are called to walk through. Some of you want to be delivered from a certain sin. The deliverance from that certain sin is walking in the Spirit. It is a daily coming to Christ. It is a continual walk. That you may walk and be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, being fruitful in every good work, and, sh and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthened with all might, according to His glorious power, for all patience and long-suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance in the saints and light. Now look at this here. Look at verse, verse 13 says, He has past tense. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us to the kingdom of the Son of His love in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. See, the thing is, He already did the work. Well, I don't feel delivered. I don't feel healed. He already did the work. Well, I'm still going through this. I'm still going. He already did the work. He has delivered us. Now walk it out. Do you remember the man? Do you remember the man in the gate called beautiful? The scripture says, and I think it's in, in John's. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. It was Peter and John. It's kind of like this. It's kind of like this. Peter and John. We're walking in the gate called Beautiful. And there was a man there who was lamed from birth, right? And he was standing there and begging for alms. And Peter said, look on us. Look on us. So the man looks at him. Peter and John says I love what Peter says. He says, silver and gold have I none. But what I do have, I give to you. Now, if you have ears to hear, listen to what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. 
Now listen, the man did not walk until Peter grabbed him by the hand and picked him up. When Peter grabbed him by the hand and picked him up, he was healed. There are moments in which God has already set you free. God has already healed you. God has already made you whole. Now grab his hand and walk it out. And you will see that you are delivered, healed, filled, and set free. That's a beautiful understanding of what it means to walk with Jesus. Again, I'm not saying that healing is not instant. I'm not saying that healing and delivery. Do not miss what I'm trying to speak to you on. People get so caught up in the little things that I'm not saying. I am not saying that God can bring, that God cannot bring instant healing and deliverance. That's not what I'm saying. Obviously, we do believe that. But what I'm saying is there are some things in which you need to get a revelation of for yourself. Things that Christ has already done that you don't see yet. That by believing you walk in and as you believe and as you walk daily with the Lord, you will see the wholeness that's already been given to you. Grab him by the hand. you are free you see this is this is this is what happens a lot of times a lot of times what what occurs is this satan will have you think that you are not free jesus says it's kind of like this imagine some birds that are that are in a cage and these little birds from birth have been trained to stay in that cage. That's all they know is that little cage. And a man comes in and unlocks that cage and swings it wide open. But because of their mindset, because they that's all that they see and know, they don't realize that they have already been set free. They simply need to fly. But because they know, that's all they know, because they realize that they're in a cage, they don't see the open door that has already been provided for. You have been free. He has translated you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. You are free. And whom the sun sets free is free indeed. The problem is that you have a mindset of the flesh. Satan would say to you, you're still bound. Jesus said to you, I've already made you free. Is my blood not enough? You see what I mean? And so, as you receive Christ, as you walk with Christ daily, your eyes will begin to see the freedom that has already been purchased before the foundations of the earth. It has already been done. Now, there are moments in your life where there is an instant thing, and that is not to be taken away from. That's actually part of my own personal testimony. I was instantly delivered from things. I was instantly healed from issues. But I'm going to tell you something else. There are, there are more things that God has already given to you 
that you need to walk out because your walk with the Lord is a journey. There are more things that have already been provided for that you simply must now receive by faith and walk by faith. See, the same Jesus that instantly calmed the storm when he said, cease, be still, when he was sleeping in the boat, was the same Jesus that walked on the water and did not move the storm. Two separate occasions. Jesus fell asleep. He took a nap. The disciple says, we're perishing, Lord. Don't you care about us? He gets up, yawns, rebukes the winds, and they cease. And then elsewhere, around the fourth watch of the night, a storm came in and Jesus walks on the water. In this occasion, Jesus did not cause the storm to cease, but he did provide a way to overcome the storm. So Peter comes out of the boat, walks on the water, does what he could not do on his own by simply looking onto Christ. There are moments, there are moments where he ceases the winds for you. There are moments when he ceases the storms for you. And then there are moments when he says, I see the storm. Now walk it through and look at me. Because I want to show you something greater than just the stopping of the storm. I want you to see that you can do what you cannot do on your own simply by looking at me. He is the way. He is the entrance of everything. Is this making sense? I hope it makes sense. So please, it's very, human nature is, well, you know, you said this and that's not true because this, this, and that. Listen, for every, <clears throat> here's the thing. You have to look at scripture and look at for what it is. There are many, many things and there are many, many avenues in which you have freedom. Maybe it's not freedom that you're in need of. The Lord wants you to be filled with him, to live a victorious life. And here's the thing. When I say things like that, when I say vic live a victorious life, I'm not talking about God wants you to have a perfect life. When I say God wants you to have a victorious life, it doesn't mean that he is wanting you to have this perfect you know, easy breezy, the life is green on the other side type of life, lemon pie in the sky thing. Because we're all going to go through tribulations. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul, beautiful illustration in the book of Acts, where the Bible says that he, they, they stoned him, they left him for dead. And he goes back to the city that they stone him and he preaches the gospel saying, we must through many tribulations enter into the kingdom of God. Can you imagine Paul with two black eyes, swollen, shut, maybe blood coming out of his face, preaching the gospel? We, through many tribulations, must enter the kingdom of God. See, this is not popular. There are some moments where the Lord, just like the Lord, the Lord that sovereignly delivered Paul when they were trying to kill him they took him out of a basket and they sneaked him out God worked mightily in that situation yet it was the same Paul that was stoned yet it was the same Paul that went through the agony of persecution yet God was working in him mightily 
Some of you is what I'm saying is this. Some of you want an easy solution, an easy fix. I just need my little shot and I'm, I'm done. I'm good to go. And that's not sometimes the deepest healings and the greatest authority that God wants to give you comes through the time of walking into that process. Is this making sense? I hope it is. You see the same, the same Peter that was put in jail and was rescued by the angel of the Lord out of the prison who was delivered mightily and powerfully was the same Peter that was delivered into the Romans and died for the sake of Christ. You see, so the storms may come. Trials may come and situations may come. But if you keep your eyes on the prize, you'll see your victory. Yeah, I just sense that in my heart. Some of you want an easy fix. And yes, there are moments, do not disregard, there are moments in which God does supernatural works. I believe in it. We've seen many testimonies on this stream. People being delivered instantaneously. Addictions breaking off of people's lives. We've seen it here on the stream. But I've also seen many, many more have a fullness of a revelation that God gives through the word and then they walk it out now and now they're able to impart the same freedom they receive to others and so we need the full counsel of God here's another scripture that nobody talks about you know the Bible says that Paul went about healing everyone Jesus went about healing all that were sick even Paul, the, the scripture says that when Paul prayed for people, people were instantly healed. Mir miracles occurred. But in 1 Timothy, he tells Timothy about Onesimus, who almost died. And then he gives some counseling to Timothy because of a, a, a condition that he had in his, in his stomach. Well, why couldn't Paul instantly heal him? You see, sometimes things are not always instant, but they are given. You just have to walk it through. There are moments, guys, listen. There are moments in my, even within my own personal life where I have seen the healing and delivering power of Christ. And yet I have also seen a walking out of a reality that was already given. And sometimes God will allow that so that you can have the key and unlock it for others. And in turn, they get free and they get restored and they get healed. Even, even this, remember the man that was, do you remember the man that was, that was, um, he was sick. He was 36 years lame in the pool of, I think, Bethesda. He waited. See, everybody looks at the instant healing. And yes, Jesus did the instant healing. But that man waited for 36, 30 some odd years. You see, God was working the process for that healing.
God is working all things together for your good. He is working all things together for his good. <clears throat> and I'm going to tell you this. Here's another, here's another thing. Well, some will say, well, is sickness part of God's plan? Is, is, is bondages? No, it is not. God wants you to be victorious. But in the way in which how he does it is up to him. Your job is to not figure anything out. Your job is to fall into him and trust him. He can be trusted. The Lord can be trusted. He can be trusted. Sickness, disease is not part of the will of God, friends. Don't get it twisted. What I'm saying specifically here is this. I just feel in my heart that there are some of you <clears throat> that this is a word of confirmation for you. <clears throat> now, I don't want you to think here that I'm saying a blanket statement. What I'm saying is, I sense in my spirit that I sense in my spirit that there are some of you that want that instant quick fix. And the Lord is saying to some of you that are thinking that, He's not going to do it in the way that you think, but he will. And he is. You just have to trust him. He can be trusted. Now, this word is not for everyone. <clears throat> It's not for every single person. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying that this applies to every person. But what I'm saying is that there are some who feel that in your hearts. You just want to instant this, instant that, instant this, instant that. And, and you're getting frustrated because it's not happening that way. And your faith is going like this. And God is saying, no, the reason why you're going like this is because you want this instant thing. I just, I'm asking you to hold my hand and trust me because I'm going to see you through this. And I'm going to demonstrate my glory in your life in a way that you've never known before. You just got to hold my hand and let me walk with you. Some things are meant to be walked. Not everything, but some things. So please understand because I don't want people to say, well, you're, this is not, you know... Listen, just hear with the ears to hear. See? Colossians 1. Let's go. Let's, let's, let's keep looking at this. This is something that the Lord really wants us to understand in his word. It says, for this reason, we also... Since the day, amen, Jonathan, blessings. <clears throat> listen, listen to this. For this reason, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. Why? And ask you that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and in spiritual understanding. So let's just break that down and stop there. You see, Paul, through the Holy Spirit, was praying for the church of Colossae. Ruthie, good to see you, my sister. For this reason, 
We also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and all spiritual understanding. Now let's let's under let's let's break this down. So Paul, through the agency of the Holy Spirit, what he's what he's praying for the church of Colossae, he is asking the Lord that they would be filled filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that word filled is that they would continue to be filled that they would be being filled they would continue to be filled <clears throat> with the knowing of his will that they would continue to be filled with the knowing of his will the word knowledge is the the word it means it means the knowing of it's not a head knowledge thing it's not like some some academic scholastic intellectual thing he's saying no i'm asking that you would be filled with the knowing of his will that you would know his will that you would be filled continually with his will you see some ask i want to know god's will for my life and the answer is you're going to find the will of God being in the continual communion of the Holy Spirit in your life. The understanding of the will of God for your life will come from the place of being, being filled with his will continually. I don't know if this is making sense. Maybe I'm, let me try to explain it in a different way. If you want to know the will of God, you have to be continually filled with the knowing of his will and the only way to be continually filled with the knowing of his will is to live a life of abiding with christ daily when you abide and commune with christ daily you will be filled and be being filled with his will it's the same kind of concept that says uh, don't be drunk with wine which is an excess but be filled with the spirit by speaking to yourself psalms hymns and spiritual songs that word be filled is be being filled it means be presently filled it's not filled past tense it's a filling that is present that means ongoing continually so the, the, the perfect continual will of God can only be found in the continual coming to him. Does that make sense? See, a fountain is a fountain because it continues. It's constantly ever present. We cannot live our life from the past. We cannot live our spiritual walks with God, our prayer life from, from the past. We have to continually come to Christ daily, every day being present in the presence, in the now. We find His will in the moment. The Lord wants you to be being filled. He wants you to live in the knowing of his will, in all wisdom and all spiritual understanding. You see, God wants you to have wisdom and spiritual understanding. For what purpose? That you may walk, that you may walk, that you may walk worthy of the Lord fully pleasing him being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God see he wants you to walk worthy of the Lord how do we walk worthy of the Lord his blood has already made you worthy he now wants you to walk worthy to that call Because you are worthy, because his blood has cleansed you, because you are now called worthy, now walk in that worthiness. That's what he's saying. 
Walk worthy of the Lord. Walk worthy of his blood. God, listen, Jesus paid a price for your sin and for my sin. Jesus paid a precious ransom for you. Now, our lives should respond that. Our life should reflect the worthiness of that sacrifice. He wants us to walk worthy of the Lord. Your walk should bring worthiness to God, worship to Him. He wants you to be fully pleasing to Him, being fruitful in every good work. See, we don't. a lot of people don't talk about good work. Good works don't save us. We're not saved by good works, but we are definitely saved unto good for good works does that make sense so we're not saved by the good that we do we are saved by the preciousness and worthiness of christ and because we are saved by the preciousness and a worthiness of christ now he is calling us to live a life fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of god the knowledge of God is not this. It is the knowing of who he is. He wants you to be to walk worthy of the Lord, being fully pleasing to him, being fruitful in every good work. How does it come? By the increasing of the knowledge of God. Being fruitful in every work, increasing in the knowledge of God. When you increase in the knowledge of God, there's fruitfulness of every good work. It is easy to please him. You begin to walk worthy of him because it is the knowing of God that imparts, that infuses his fruitfulness. Does that make sense? The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, goodness, gentleness, meekness, kindness, self-control. But the word fruit is it, it, uh, another word for fruit is evidence, the effects, the, the causes. When we spend time with him, when we increase in the knowing of God, the effects are the fruits of the Spirit. Does that make sense? You want to be fruitful? You want to multiply? You want to have the fruit of the Spirit? You want to have love and joy and peace and goodness and gentleness and meekness and kindness? You want to have the fruit of the Spirit be in the Spirit, grow in the Spirit daily be in the spirit daily grow in the knowing of the spirit and you'll have the fruit of the spirit you see i said this uh, on, on another day ago uh, a few months ago the fruit of the spirit is a lot like a woman who is pregnant the woman who is pregnant immediately is recognizable publicly you can see Oh, that woman is pregnant. You can, well, why? Because there's a glow about her and her belly is extended. Her womb is, is, is extended because you see that child in the womb. It's so public. You can see it anywhere where a pregnant woman is. It is a public knowledge. You can see it. But that public knowledge did not come from the public place. It came from a private place. You see, being pregnant was a private act. It was an act between her and her spouse in private, alone, from a private touch, from a private embrace, from a private affection, from a private intimate 
expression of love. And because of that private, intimate expression of love in privacy, behind closed doors, in secret, it's now public. That is what this is like. You want to be pregnant with the fruit of the Spirit. You want to have love and joy and peace and goodness. You want to have the light of Christ. seen in us you want to have you want to see the effects of that it's all in the place of intimate expressions between you and God the knowing of who he is in the secret place Eric Gilmore says it like this unless I forgot how he says it he says unless the 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 public touch doesn't have a private... I forgot how he says it. Uh, it won't go anywhere. Unless the public touch affects the private kiss or something like that. I'm totally butchering it, but you know. <laughs> Basically, it's the same thing that, what I, that I'm saying. A fruit, trees. I said it's Sunday. I preached on so, somewhat on, on, on a similar topic Sunday. You see a fruit. You see tree. You go outside, you see a fruit tree. That tree is producing fruit because its roots are deep within the soil. The reason why that tree is fruitful has nothing to do with its own doing. It has everything to do with the nature of the tree and it has everything to do with the atmosphere around that tree the soil the air the nutrients and because of those things there is fruitfulness it's the same with us because of our very nature being one in christ and our nature being born again and our nature being in him we have the access to the very presence of God, the atmosphere of heaven within us and around us, growing deep within us daily. It causes the natural fruit to occur. And so what I'm saying is this, many of the issues, I'm telling you like 99.9, .9, and there are some exceptions, 99.9% .9 of all of the issues come from this place. Your marriage, finances, restoration, mindsets, all everything stems from that place of being in the Lord. Yeah, Fias says it. This is the Eric Gilmore quote. The public touch has not, unless the private the public touch has not turned into a private kiss, it will fade away. The reason he gives a public touch is to draw you to a private kiss. Yes. Absolutely. Yep. Adriana says the same thing. The public touch has to got to turn into a private kiss or it will all fade away. Yes. Absolutely. This is why, I mean, I've even seen this I've even seen this as well. I've even seen people publicly touched and anointed of God. Public, publicly touched and anointed of God. And they fall away. They fall back into their previous lives or they fall away from into 
atheism they fall away even into witchcraft they fall away into the why because they had the public touch but they've never had the private embrace of god they never took that and brought it into the secret you see the things of god the kingdom of god is not like this world in the kingdom of god the first will be last in the last will be first in the kingdom of god the private life is priority not the public life in the kingdom of god the public life comes from the place of the private life see the world is the opposite the world says everything is a public lie everything's a public thing everything is public the world lives from the from the outside in god lives from the inside out the world lives from the public into privacy but god lives from the privacy into the public do you see We need to grow in the knowing of who he is, the knowledge of God. God wants you to be fruitful. God wants you to be walking worthy of him. God wants you to increase in the knowledge of God. You see, the more you receive something, see here, here's, I gotta I got say this before we start breaking more. It's funny that Ray said upside down kingdom because that's actually the name of one of the books I'm writing. It's called the upside down kingdom. And it's about that, what I'm talking about. The kingdom of God in contrast to the world, the kingdom of the world. All right, now listen. Listen. In the kingdom of God, the more you receive something, the way you receive something is by giving. The world says, take to keep getting. God says, give to keep receiving. How can I increase in the knowledge of God? How can I increase in the knowing of him? By giving him more of your time. How can I increase in my awareness of him? By giving more of your awareness to him. How can I increase in the presence of God? By giving him your presence. <laughs> that literally just struck a blow inside of someone. I felt that in my spirit. How can I increase in my awareness of the presence of God? By giving him your presence. You see, the kingdom of God is a, the way the, the kingdom of God moves and functions, it's, it comes from the place of stewardship and giving out. This is why in the book of Proverbs, it says, those who refresh others, will they themselves be refreshed? You see, as I'm refreshing you, I'm receiving the same refreshing. I'm being refreshed because I'm refreshing you. I'm being edified because I'm edifying you, but my edifying comes from me being edified in him. You see what I mean? That you, so, so, so here, look at this, verse 11. Strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power god wants you to be strengthened with all might what does that mean might is strength god wants you to be strengthened with might or power according to what his glorious power in order to be strengthened you need his power but his power comes from his presence
and I'm going to say this, his power is a person. Because the Bible says in the, in the Corinthian letters that Christ is both the wisdom of God and the power of God. So the strength, the power comes through the person, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Do you see? Strengthen with all might, verse 11, according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy. You want to have long suffering and joy, that you need the strength of his power. And his power comes as you come to him, because he himself is the power. He himself is the presence. He himself is your strength. It's him, it's always been him. The kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but power. That word power is the word dunamis or dunamis. Let me pull it up here. Ugh, it's not pulling up. Anyway, that word power is the word dunamis. And that word dunamis means is where we get the word dynamic or dynamite it's explosive power it is also miracle working power that word that word dunamis or dunamis the word power is wonder working miracle working power strengthened with might according to his glorious power for all patience, long-suffering with joy. You want to increase in his power, my friend. Increase in Jesus. He gives power. He increases their might. He increases strength. You need strength. You need to go to the power. We ought to see our walk with the Lord like a cell phone. You see, it's, it's only a matter of time until this battery dies out. You need to daily charge, charge this to the source of power. If this is not plugged into the source of power, it's a matter of time before it dies. Think about it. The power that is charged with this phone has everything to do with the power it receives from this outlet. The power to see the colors, the power to navigate, the power to, to view the text message, the power to send text messages, the power to turn on your GPS, all come from that charge. Think about that. You can't walk powerless. You must be plugged into the power. We have to see our walk with the Lord like that. You cannot see. You cannot hear. You cannot discern. You cannot operate without being connected and charged with him. So that you can be charged with him and carry him everywhere you go connected with the power you know what's awesome too is the phone is also connected by Wi-Fi and that's another source of knowledge it's another connection but you cannot have that connection if you're not plugged into the power first some of you want to hear from the Lord be plugged into Christ Come to him daily, and you will see how easy that connection is established. This also reminds me of Ephesians chapter 3, 
where it says, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that he would grant you out of the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might in his spirit in the inner man, in your spirit, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, so that you may be filled with the love of God, to know the love of God, so that you may be filled with the fullness of God. It reminds me of the same passage. God wants to strengthen you with His glory. God wants you to strengthen you with His power. But it's not just for Hondo, Shando, Hurubarabando. It's not for that only. It's not just for casting devils and healing the sick. That's, that is part of the gospel's mission. But that's not just for that. It is also for living a, vi a virtuous, a victorious life. It is also for you to walk in love. It is also for you to walk in the fullness that God has for you, friend. We limit God to just what he does. The real unlimited source comes from who he is. Man, this is just flowing today. His power is given for many reasons. It's not, see, people limit the power to just what they see on the outside. The power is also received from within when you're in Christ. Because that power is made to strengthen your spirit daily. So that you can see him and receive him and be filled with him. Verse 12. See the power, I'll just say this. The power is also given for patience and joy. The power is given for everything. The power is given for your marriage. The power is given for your kids. The power is given for your walk with the Lord. The power is given. It's not just for Hondo Shando. I believe in Hondo Shando. I pray in tongues daily, my friends. And I love it. <laughs> and I think you should too. But the power is not just for that. The power is given so that you can love and exercise and exhibit the fruit of the Spirit. giving thanks, verse 12, to the Father who has qualified us. You, here, we, we, we skip, we skip, we skip all the time. Giving thanks to the Father. See, there, there is a reason why verse 12 says giving thanks to the Father. Over and over, Look at the letters of Paul. The beginning chapters always starts with thankfulness. What is thankfulness? It's a life of praise, my friends. When you praise something, it's because you enjoy it and you thank that person for it. So for example, praise means to thank, to relish, to enjoy, to declare how good something is. Right? So if I were to give you food that you found delicious, you would say, oh man, this is so good. This is so awesome. I really like this. You would tell your friends. You would tell your family, oh, you got to try this meal. This is delicious. This is awesome. Oh, it's so delicious. And because you enjoy it, the experience becomes more heightened. Someone, some of you just got what I just said subtly. When you live a life of joy, when you live a life of praise, relishing how good he is, the presence of God becomes more heightened. You have to live in perpetual praise. Praise. We ought to be a people full of praise. God inhabits the people that praise him. Jesus. 
giving thanks. Another words of giving thanks is, is giving praise, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us. Why do we give thanks to the Father? Because he's qualified you. He's qualified you to become what? Partakers of what? The inheritance of the saints and light. He has qualified you to partake of him. And he has qualified you to partake of what's coming. He has qualified us. Not in our own self. Our sufficiency and our strength does not come from us, my friend. It all comes from him. See, one of the things we need to shift into is this. Praise is not just a song. Praise is not just something we listen to to make our hairs stand up. No. Praise is a lifestyle. Praise is an attitude of the heart. Praise is an offering of your soul to God. Praise comes from understanding your place in Him. Praise comes from the revelation of who He is. That's right. Taste and see that He is good. Giving thanks or praise to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints of light. What does that mean? That means that He has qualified you to partake of His inheritance. What is His inheritance? The eternal kingdom. And the eternal kingdom is not when you die. The eternal kingdom is to know Him now. This is eternal life, John 17, that they may know you and believe in Christ. Eternal life the moment begins the moment you enter into the knowing of who he is. Now, here's the wonderful thing. Here's the wonderful thing. We have been now here here's another thing. This is this is something that I can't wrap my mind around. You know what's also a part of the inheritance? This right here. Let me just pull it up. <laughs> Give me one second. I want to find it. Second Peter 1 4. We'll turn there real quick and then we'll go back to Colossians, okay? Second Peter 1 4. Look at this. It says this. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the what? The knowledge of God. That word epigonosai discernment the recognition of god the knowing of god and of jesus our lord as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness now notice again it doesn't say he will give he has given <laughs> it's already yours that's why i keep saying you've already been free he has, as his divine power, has given, past tense, all things that pertain to life and godliness. What is the things that pertain to life and godliness? That word life is the word Zoe. It is the life of God. He has given you all things that pertain to the life of God and godliness. What is godliness? The, the ability that God does within you to make him like him. Through what? The knowledge of him. It comes through what? The knowing of who he is. The discerning of him. The recognition of him. See, we need to learn to discern him. We need to recognize him. But the only way to do that is to be continually in him. 
daily. Woo, I feel the anointing. Something, it just seeped through my belly. Glory to God. The knowledge of him who called you, who called us by his glory and virtue, by which we have been given to us great, exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped corruption that is in the world through lust. Now, you have been given exceedingly great and precious promises. There are things that God has promised you. But not only that, man, this is, I just feel in my heart, I'm, this is speaking to people. It's not just things that he's promised you prophetically or things that he's promised to you in prayer, but these are things that he has promised you in his word. By which we have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you might be partakers of the divine nature. Here's something that a lot of people don't talk about. You are partakers of the nature of God. You're not just meant to live some meager, lowly, fleshly, compulsive life. You are meant to partake daily of the nature of God. And His nature becomes your nature. And you become godly. Godliness. That's what that is. The partakers of His nature you become sons and daughters of God. He's given you these things. My God, I feel the anointing is breaking bondages through the word. Woo! The word is breaking bondages right now. My God. Listen. By which we have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises the promises that are in the scriptures the promises that are contained in who we are in him the revelation the realities of our sonship in christ your freedom all of the whole, everything it's in his word in his promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. How do you partake of the divine nature? By partaking of his promises. By partaking of the things that he has said. How? Through the knowledge of him who called. It is the knowing of him by which we have been given these promises. So here, 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 here. Listen, that somebody... Somebody needs to hear this. I just feel this in my heart, friends. You see, there are promises that God has given to you. But until he does not reveal that to you, you will not walk in it. You cannot walk in something that you don't see. That's called blindness. These great and precious promises are contained in his word, but they only come from the knowing, the knowledge of him. So what that looks like is, here's the word, here's the scriptures, go to the spirit, the spirit will reveal these promises, you partake of that which he gives you through his words. Look what it says. He given, he's given us all things that as it relates to life and godliness through the knowledge of him, through the epigonosi, that is the knowing of who he is, the knowledge of God, the discernment and the recognition of God who's called us by glory, glory and virtue by which we have been given great and precious promises. These great and precious promises are given in the knowledge of God. So get into the word, get into the spirit, get into prayer, get into communion, get into fellowship. Some of you are getting excited to pray again. That's the work of the spirit because he wants to light the scriptures to you, unveil, blow upon the pages right into your spirit and show you what's already yours.
How do you escape the corruption that is in the world? How do you escape the lusts of the flesh, the pride of life, the lust of the eyes? By partaking of the things of which he's promised you, that comes from his presence, that comes from knowing him. Many people do not discern and recognize him. Even among the people of God, because there's no fellowship, there's no knowing and growing in the knowledge of God, few discern when he's moving and few discern when he's speaking. The wind blows. You hear the sound, but not everyone hears it. You must train yourself to hear the blowing of the wind. You must train yourself by, by growing in discernment of that wind. The only way to grow in discernment and recognition is to grow within him, to spend time in him to be in him, to apply his presence daily, to wait before him, to commune with him. You know, many, many, many people, they get frustrated when they pray because the first thing they begin to realize is how full of themselves they really are, full of distractions, full of thoughts, full of fears, full of anxieties, full of insecurities, full of all sorts of things. They're too aware and full of themselves and they miss the Lord. And so what happens is, oh, well, this is not working. I'm going to stop praying. No, you just need to sit there and wait before him. And the Spirit of God will begin to train you how to discern Him. Training is not instant. It is daily, ongoing, and progressional or progressive. It is ongoing. Is that making sense? The only way to grow in discernment is being with the discerner. The only way to recognize his voice is to learn to recognize him. When you recognize him, you will recognize his voice. With time, you will learn through experience for yourself and you will learn to discern through the spirit and through the word for the word is quick and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword piercing through the dividing asunder of soul and spirit joints and marrows bones and ligaments the word of god is so sharp it has the ability to discern you know that word word is not the word logos or graphi which means written or or uh you know, uh, written word. It is the spoken word. It is the rhema. It is the speaking of God. You cannot hear the speaking of God if you're not with the Lord. God only reveals when you're with him. God only speaks when you speak with him. God only ministers to you when you minister to him. The rhema only comes what is the rhema he takes the word he takes the scripture he illuminates it and through that verse it speaks to you that is god talking to you whoo my god take that receive it swallow it in meditate on it and it, it you will begin to grow in higher discernment discernment only grows with him It is the word rhema. The word of God is sharper, powerful than any two-edged sword. What is he saying? The speaking of God 
the utterance of God, what God is saying. God will never say something that contradicts the written scripture. The spirit will always speak what the scriptures declare. But the scriptures have to be opened to you by the spirit. That's why Paul says, I pray that you may be filled with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light that only comes through your knowing of him, through the knowledge of God. The word says the entrance of your words brings light. That's rhema. Let's go back to Colossians. Again, look. Look at how much more sense. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and all spiritual understanding. You see, God wants to fill you with the knowing of his will and wisdom and understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for his patience and long suffering with joy. You see how the word is now starting to come alive through the testimony of other scriptures speaking together? There's, it's saying the same thing. Giving thanks to the Father who's qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance and the saints and light. He has delivered us, past tense, from the power of darkness and conveyed us. Other translation says, translated us, transported us, delivered us into the kingdom of the son of his love. And whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. God wants you to be filled with wisdom. He wants you to be fruitful in every good work. He wants you to increase in the knowledge of God. He wants you to walk worthy of the Lord. He wants you to be strengthened with might. He wants you to have patience, long suffering, and joy. He wants to give you his power. He wants you to see that it's already been given to you. He wants you now to receive it and now walk in it. Making sense? You have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God. Who? Jesus. He's the image of the invisible God. You want to know how God is like the Father? You want to know what the Father is like? Look at Jesus. You want to know what God's voice sounds like? Look at Jesus. Jesus is God's sermon in a body. <laughs> Jesus is God's word in a human body tabernacle Jesus is the perfect image of the invisible God the firstborn over all creation for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on the earth visible and invisible see all things were created that are in heaven that are on the earth visible and invisible all things were created for by him all things everything that exists was created by him things that were created in heaven things that are on earth the visible the invisible whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created through him and for him everything will serve him even the devil himself that is under the feet of jesus 
will ultimately have to pay service to Christ. Why? For by him all things were created that are in heaven and earth, visible and visible, whether thrones, dominions, principalities, or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he's going to take all the wicked things that are and he will force it to serve the sufficiency and the greatness of Christ. It's all going to end. He is going to make everything in heaven and earth and under the earth bow its knee. That's why God has given him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee would bow and every tongue would confess those in heaven, on the earth, and under the earth, that Jesus is Lord. All things were created by him and for him and unto him. We need a revelation of the greatness of Christ. We need to glimpse him as he truly is. He is not on the same playing field with the devil, my friends. Jesus is nowhere near the same playing field. He is so much more excellent, so much more stronger, so much more powerful, so much more higher than anything that can ever be. That is our Jesus. He is before all things. And in him, all things consist. In, uh, in him, all things have their being. In you, in me, we're in him. We have our being in him. We are alive within him. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things. And in him, all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church. He's the head of the body. The church. Are you the church? Guess what? You are part of the body. He is the head. Who is the beginning? The firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. This is beautiful here. Verse 19. It says, For it pleased the Father that in him, Christ, all the fullness should dwell and by him to reconcile all things to himself and by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having been made peace through the blood of his cross. And you listen carefully who once were alienated and enemies in where your mind. This is your battlefield. You were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, by the things you did. Yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy, blameless, and above reproach in his sight. If indeed you continue in the faith. You see, we need to be in continual fellowship in the faith with the Lord. Grounded in the Lord, steadfast in the Lord, unmoving, not moved away from the hope of the gospel which we heard, which was preached under every creature under heaven, on which I, Paul, became a minister. You see that? It's a powerful thing. Guys, if you can, please do me a favor and give this stream a thumbs up if this has been a blessing to you. All of the likes and thumbs that go up on the stream cause the engagement of the stream to enlarge, reaching more people for Jesus. And so help me steward this channel by stewarding your thumbs up so that we can steward more people for the stewardship of his presence. Also share this with a friend. If the Lord puts it on your heart to share this with a specific brother or sister or family member, I encourage you to do that now. Also, if you have not subscribed to the channel, I encourage you to please subscribe and hit the bell button, hit all notifications so that every time we go live, you'll be the first to be notified. Now, we have a ebook that came out 
called seven uh, it's called uh from glory to glory seven keys to the uncommon spiritual life it is a free ebook and it is for you absolutely for free all you need to do is sign up at fathersglory.org once you put in your email there you're going to receive an email back with the link to the email and you'll receive it there amen so um Just out of curiosity, if there is anyone who has read it and want to share a testimony or comment on, as to how it's been a blessing to you, go ahead and put it in the comment section so that, um, you know, uh, it can encourage others to read. These are seven keys that that were found um, that 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 were ba that are basically seven principles that are found in the scriptures and also uh, things that I've received from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for the super chat, Paul. Blessings to you. Yes, the book is 100% free. Right now, um, there's a couple of grammatical mistakes in it, and there's a uh, couple of minor spelling issues. I apologize about that. That's I'm, I'm actually right now developing a, with my publisher, and we're going to publish it. And it's going to be totally re-edited and all that stuff. And so um, check your spam if you didn't get a link. You should have received a link. Check your spam. It's a uh, basically a response to the email. Yep. If you didn't receive the link, try again. Try signing up again and just put in your email there. Make sure that you spelled your email correctly as well. So, amen. Um, also, another thing, please do us a favor. Please, please, please do us a favor. Um, and subscribe to our church's YouTube channel. I preach on Sundays. Um a good amount of the time as well as others and pastoral staff as well uh visit us it's it's um our our, our youtube channel is called victory church fort smith go ahead and uh subscribe to that channel so that on sundays you'll see uh the service amen i hope that it is a blessing to you amen Okay, now brothers and sisters, it is that time for me to get going. I'm going to quickly just pray a general prayer over everyone, and then I have to get going. I have a pretty full day today. Father, I thank you for every person that is on this stream. Father, I thank you that you would continue to show them your goodness, your grace. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would abound the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowing of you and the knowledge of who you are. Father, I pray, Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, that you would fill your people with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding that they would walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to you, that they would be fruitful in every good work, and that you would increase them in your knowledge. Strengthen them, Lord, with your might, according to your glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy. I pray for the revelation of the partaking of the inheritance of the saints in light. I thank you that you would do that in the name of of Jesus, we give you glory. Father, I pray for every prayer request that has come in, and even those who did not, um, you know, maybe they didn't get a, uh, I didn't have the time to, you know, come into agreement. We pray into every agreement for every prayer request, and we thank you that you would meet those needs, Father, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. 
I thank you, Lord, that you're doing a work. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, if you can, like, share, subscribe to the channel. Subscribe also to Victory Church Fort Smith. It's on, uh, I think, um, it's on um, my channel. So if you go to channel, you go to my channel, it, and it's right there. It's in blue. It's called Victory Church, and it's also the community tab. On my community tab, I've tagged Victory there often, so you can check on my community tab, and you can subscribe there as well. If you want to donate and partner with us, help us to uh, partner with us. One of the projects that we're working on right now is we want to redo all of Victory Church's social media uh, 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 sound and streaming. And so we are raising up funds for equipment for that. And if you want to sow into that, um, just visit fathersglory.org press so and right there it'll tell you there's a tab that says for victory church and you can sew into that we're believing god for a sound system a full sound system it's going to take a, you know it's 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 a, it's a good amount of finances that needed to go in and also for cameras the same quality that you see here is the same quality that i want to release to the church amen so in order for us to do that we need effective sound system we're looking at a specific sound system. My friend Jackie Baker and I are kind of working on, you know, putting that together. And then also, you know, I'm also needing a few cameras as well uh, for that. And uh, good things are ahead for Victory Church. Amen. All right. It is time for me to get going. Love you guys. And we will see you tomorrow morning in Jesus name. Blessings to you. Amen.